Hershey might be one of our three. Was there? Yeah. Let me have one of those each. Thanks. Good. There's our balance. Why did uh, Why did Dylan Brooks get a pick? I wasn't watching that.
Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to the Oregon Ducks who move on. They will next play Michigan in Kansas City in the round of 16. Our student athlete guests are Tyler Dorsey and Dylan Ennis, along with the head coach, Dana Altman. Coach, let's uh, begin with you. Quick question. Um, you had a couple of runs in the second half that really turned the tide in this game. Uh, what were some of the ingredients that went into that? I think, um, you know, the, the difference in the game, the first half, um, you know, our turnovers really put us in a bad hole. Um, we had 10 turnovers, and they scored 16 points um, off of those turnovers. Um, the second half, we had four turnovers, and, and they only got five points off those turnovers. So I thought that was really significant. Um, the second stat that, that really jumps out at you is we had 22 uh, second chance points, and uh, none bigger than um, uh, when we missed the free throw and Jordan Bell got a rebound and uh, Dylan Brooks missed a shot, and uh, we were down four, and, and then Tyler, or down three, and then Tyler hit the big three to tie it up. Uh, I thought that was pos possession of the game. So uh, it wasn't uh, a pretty game to watch. It was kind of ugly, both teams uh, getting after each other. Uh, their defensive pressure and uh, athleticism on the perimeter uh, really gave us problems. Uh, our guards, uh, Tyler didn't do much wrong offensively, but uh, he had four turnovers. Peyton had four. Uh, Dylan Ennis had three. So uh, their, their pressure on the perimeter um, did bother us. Uh, but other than that, I, I thought our guys uh, you know, made the plays when they had to, got the stops when they had to. Uh, they shot the ball 60% in the first half and only 40% in the second half. So uh, I really think, again, we take the turnovers out of that and um, – you know, we, we played okay, but those turnovers really did make a, a big, big difference in the game. If you wish to ask a question, please raise your hand. We will bring a, a microphone to you. Um, Mason and Noel will handle those duties. Howie, let's start with you. Uh, for Dylan, Tyler, I mean, obviously a very emotional game, intense back and forth. Was their defense everything that you expected? Uh, yeah, um, coach told us that they were going to get up uh, and on the passing lanes, you know, pressure us, you know, uh, really far away from the basket. Um, you know, I think once we started running our plays and, you know, getting through what we planned, you know, that's when we had success. You know, we stopped having success when we stopped sharing the ball, you know, stopped being strong with the ball. So, you know, I think, you know, when we finally, you know, got used to it and, you know, played together, you know, we we're successful. You, sir. Uh, Jermaine Franklin with TSN, um, phenomenal game, Tyler. Uh, but I'll ask uh, Dylan about a specific play. On the game tying shot by Tyler, Tyler Dor Dorsey, you were able to keep that play alive. And uh, we were just talking about your yeoman's work and how important it is. Can you talk a little bit about um, the importance of that? And if I could get uh, Coach Dana to talk about that sort of play um, in the keys to, win, in, uh, keys to a big victory like that. Um, yeah, you know, coach is always on me, you know, being that guy to do little things, whether that's deflection, that's a rebound, you know, that's my job, um, you know, and I love it. You know, I know I could do it really good. And, you know, getting that extra shot for us, you know, it was big. Um, but, you know, it's a team effort. You know, I'm just, you know, working as hard as I can. You know, coach has the confidence in me to play me and keep me on the floor. So, you know, if he's going to do that, I have to make the plays, you know, for us to win. And, you know, I was able to get a hand on the ball. You know, Jordan Bell got, you know, the rebound from that. And, you know, Tyler hit a big shot. And, you know, it's, that's all that she wrote. No, I agree. I, you know, the game um, isn't as simple as just, you know, shooting the ball. You know, there, there are a lot of... Uh, things, you know, I, th I thought the rebounding, us winning the rebounding by seven, and I mentioned the second chance points uh, to combat our turnovers was the only thing that kept us in the game. And like I said, the missed free throw that time and, and Jordan getting the first one, kicking it out to Dylan, and then the ball kept alive and, and Jordan securing it again and kicking it out to Tyler, and then Tyler nails the shot. And, you know, so that gives him one three, and now he's got the confidence. And then we ran a, a double drag for him late, and they switched a big on him. And, and uh, you know, Tyler saw that his hands were down, um, and he made a decision to let it go. And, and 
like I said, I was joking with him, you know, nine for 10, how the heck did you miss that one shot? You know, uh, but when a player gets that confidence and the one right in front of our bench was wide open, you know, and, and Tyler just plant stepped and knocked it down and, and then his footwork was great on his last shot. And so uh, Tyler, you know, really finished our plays for us. But again, it's, it's a team effort. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, everybody, you know, Tyler didn't start out really good. Uh, he kind of came on in that second half and, you know, we were able to, you know, to get it done with the rebounding. Josh. Josh Peter, USA Today. Tyler, how is it that you've suddenly asserted yourself the way you have late in the season? And I'm hoping, Dana, you could chime in on that too. Um, it's just my teammates. Um, they've been finding me, and all I've been doing is spotting up and making the simple play and making the right play, the right basketball play. And um, like Coach always says, um, keep my focus first on defense and rebounding and um, the offense, just let it come. And, that's all I've been doing these last couple games. And um, my teammates been having confidence in me, and um, I've just been knocking down the shots. I think the biggest factor is, is Tyler's a, a player. He's not just a scorer. And I thought for a while he just he locked in on his offense, and we weren't getting him the ball enough for a period in, in the season, and that was my fault. But I really think, like tonight, Tyler gets five rebounds. He had three steals. When, when he's playing – as a player, not just a scorer, I think that's when he really comes alive. And uh, I mentioned that in the conference tournament. You know, he starts the first game, he gets nine rebounds, you know, and against Cal, his defensive effort uh, saved us, you know. Uh, I just think when he's thinking about himself being a player, uh, the rest of his game comes, you know, and, and he doesn't focus just on that missed shot or, or a bad play. And he, because, you know, he's a player, uh, you know, that scorer mentality. I want him to have, but defense and rebounding, when he focuses on those two, and he becomes a special player. He, he becomes really special, and that's, I think, why part of the reason he's exploded here lately um, is that he's, he's been a complete player, offense, defense, and the boards, five rebounds and three steals today. Um, those are just not maybe as important as those two threes, but pretty close, pretty close. Tyler, I wanted to ask about that last three. Uh, it kind of looked like you had a thought maybe going for a, a dri drive into the bus bucket, but you just kind of stepped back and took the shot over. How much did you debate that? Did you really think much about making the drive? And then I wanted to follow up with what Coach said about the rebounding. You have to be pretty pleased with both the way Tyler and Peyton rebounded. They got some good boards for you towards the end there. Um, it was a double drag, <clears throat> and the, they switched, and the big got on me. and. Um, I practiced that hesitation pull-up shot a lot. So in my mind, I was going there, and um, his hands never came up, and I just let it go. But if his hands would have came up, I would probably think about driving. But that's how I was thinking through that process. I thought he, thought he made a really good read on it. Um, uh, I yelled at him to shoot it because I saw his hands down, and I saw his feet were right. And, uh, and the other one right in front of the bench, I was, uh, you know, I said, hit it, buddy. You know, it does go ahead. And uh, the one, I just saw his feet were right and the guy's hands were down. And I, I was yelling at him to shoot it and because uh, I, I thought it was the right play. Uh, but I agree with you that when he gets five rebounds and he gets five rebounds or anything above that, uh, it helps our team out tremendously. Uh, the seven, plus seven on the boards and the 22 to 11 second chance points was the difference in this game. And um, uh, because of our turnovers, you know, we put ourselves in a hole. Our offensive execution was not good today. Uh, their pressure got us out of sorts, and uh, we never had a flow to our, our offense, and that was all because of them uh, and our bad turnovers. Could all three of you just touch on the atmosphere here in this arena and Sacramento in general as a host city for the NCAA tournament? Well, I'll start it. it we, we've been treated unbelievable. Um, I love this arena. I think it's a, it's a great facility. The locker rooms, everything um, behind the, the arena is first class. Um, the crowd was great today. We had, we had a lot of Duck fans here, so that's great. But the, the city of Sacramento, uh, the people here at the arena, uh, we, we could not have been treated any better. Um, the la we've been here since Wednesday. Uh, we, we couldn't have been treated any better uh, the days we've been here. Yeah, you know, I think the atmosphere is great. Um, you know, the arena, you know, is one of the be better arenas I've ever played in. Um, 
You know, the city's real nice. You know, the weather is better than Eugene right now, I'll tell you that much. Um, but, you know, we, it was great playing here. Um, you know, glad we're going back to Eugene, um, knowing that we get to play on Thursday. Um, but it was great. Yeah, definitely. It's, this is a great arena. It was a great atmosphere tonight. Um, good thing we got to play on the West. We had a lot of fans tonight, and we, we feed off their energy. And when we get it going, and they get it loud. And it was just a great atmosphere tonight. Tony Harvey, uh, Sacramento Observer. Uh, Tyler Dorsey, uh, you guys were down by 11, then you made a 23-10 uh, to 10 run. And, you know, before that, you know, Dylan Brooks, he was missing a lot of shots around the basket. But he made like a 9 of the 11 points to get you to tie it at 68-68. Can you talk about him, you know, kept coming, just kept coming like a freight train, you know, to get to the basket and make things happen. And, of course, you know, he made a couple big threes for you guys. Um, definitely. Um, those were great plays, and um, he just didn't finish, and we're going to live with that. And um, he's always going to stay in attack mode, and that's what he did. He got to the rim. He draw some fouls, and he draw that, um, that three foul, and that was some big free throws he hit to um, continue that run. But um, he just kept going, and um, that's what um, good players are going to do. They're going to keep going. It's a 40-minute game, and if the first half doesn't go good, um, you just got to bounce back in the second half and keep pushing and keep pushing. Uh, Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Early in the first half, you guys attacked the rim. Your guard play attacked the rim. Was that by design to get their bigs in trouble? And I, I want to follow up with Tyler. Well, they, you know, they pressure so much that they, they get you spread out, you know, and it creates some driving lanes. Um, you know, we, we had a couple really good driving kicks, and they weren't successful. And then we, we made bad decisions. Then we thought we had to take it and we had to shoot it. And, and that got us in trouble. You know, a lot of those turnovers came without the ball movement. You know, the defense was, was set and we were just going to go make a play. And uh, we weren't very successful doing it after the first couple times because of the ball movement. So uh, we wanted to drive the ball, but we wanted to drive and kick a lot more than what we did. And, and uh, that's what created a lot of those turnovers. Tyler, no doubt they're a great defensive team. They switched a lot, and we found you on one of their bigs down low. That was, um, that was something that you got caught. How, I guess, how did you defend their bigs on those switches? Um, play up the floor and um, play on the high side and not let them get an easy catch so they can do a quick jump hook or a quick um, move to the basket. So just playing up the floor, and we practice that every day, and coach preaches that every day. So I was just playing up the floor every time I got switched on a big. Jerry Thompson, Mighty Oregon Magazine, for Dylan Ennis on a light, lighter note. It looks like, so I remember, 72-72, and you were talking to Terrell. Both of you were kind of smiling and laughing. Uh, were you just kind of saying how good, great a game it was, or what were you doing? Yeah, you know, he was actually talking to us the whole game. Uh, you know, nothing too bad. And, you know, he's saying, you know, this is what we live for. And uh, you know, I think it was a little intense for it to be emotional time, you know, between me and him. But, you know, he's right. You know, we grow up, you know, watching college basketball. And, you know, during the conference games, you know, it's great. But, you know, March Madness is something that, you know, is special. And, you know, these are the type of games that you're going to remember and you're going to tell your kids and your grandkids about one day. Tyler, uh, Tim Otis in the Washington Post. Watching you these last couple games, you seem to be a guy that plays with a lot of confidence, both, you know, don't mind talking to people, the way you carry yourself on the court. Um, is that something you kind of always had, and how does that kind of help you in situations like this when you're down three and then tied in the last couple minutes of the game to be willing to take shots in those kind of spots? Um, my coach, Coach Allman, and my teammates are confident in me. And um, Coach put the ball in my hand at the end of the game, and um, I just made the right basketball play. And um, that's all I did. And um, They found me on the great rebounds they got in the first three, and then um, I felt it going. And then the last one, I just read the play, and um, I let it go, and it went in. And um, it was just great. And um, my teammates and my coaches give me that confidence. Janie. Tyler, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. <clears throat> um, what was going through your mind right after you missed the two free throws at 336 and, and probably determined to, to do something to make up for that after that? Um, definitely um, after the game, I thought about those free throws. But um, during the game, I had to let it go. There was two minutes left. And um, I just dropped them. And I, I had to keep playing. And we kept playing. And, we kept fighting, and um, we hit the glass, and we got crucial offensive rebounds, and it went from there, and we got it going. And um, I just hit some big shots, but um, 
it, it didn't start with the big shots. It started with the defensive rebounds and offensive rebounds to get that. Josh. Tyler, from what I've read, Tyler, um, that your maternal grandfather is Greek and maternal grandmother is Israeli. And I just wondered how that heritage has just shaped you either on the court, off the court, and what it's meant to you. Um, my whole life growing up, um, I will always used to eat Greek food. And um, my um, grandmother cooks Greek food. So I've been a part of that culture for a long time. I got to go to Greece a couple times this summer. And um, it's just great to um, see that type of basketball as well. And um, it helps. And um, I'm just great to have that part of my heritage. Uh, Dylan, can you talk about uh, Stanford Robertson? He, um he came off the bench in the first half, you know, and, and scored some really big points for for the Rams, and then he got it going a little early in the second half, but he kind of waned off a little bit after that. Can you talk about his play? Oh uh, no, he played great. Um, you know, having that spark off the bench, you know, is you know big in this tournament. Um, you know, he he knew it was a big game, and you know he was on the attack most of the game. I uh, hit a few big shots for them, um, but you know he he's. You know, he, he's a young guy, you know, who's going to have a bright future. And, uh, you know, I hope the best for him. Dana, out here in front, um, did the officials give you an explanation straight away? Did the officials give you an explanation on, on Dylan's technical foul? I gave him his second personal. I'm going to follow up with Tyler, too. Well, uh, they had warned us. Um, uh, Dylan and us got the warning. And uh, we informed everybody on the team not to say anything. Uh, Dylan got the tip in and uh, said something, and they teed him. And so we were warned, and uh, that's on him. Uh, unacceptable. We haven't had a tee all year, and that's not the right time to get one. And uh, gave him his second foul. Uh, I told him after the game, you know, how would you have felt, you know, in a close ball game like this if that was the difference? And uh, control what you can control. And that was something he should have controlled. Uh, I was disappointed. I was disappointed in Dylan, first of all, uh, for, for getting us in that position. Definitely uh, disappointed in Dylan for, for that. And uh, sat him for a while. And then he, you know, he had to play the rest of the half with two fouls and, and just put us in a bad spot. Dylan and Tyler kind of along that same line. It was no doubt chippy, especially in the second half. Were they doing a lot of talking? kind of egging you guys on and you guys were talking back what was going on there you know no it was just a you know atmosphere that was real intense and but you know as you know coach teaches us and us being you know Oregon Ducks you know we can't get into that and you know I put down myself you know being a more experienced guard um you know I have to keep my cool you know with that stuff and I know the game was intense but you know if we would have lost then me and Dylan would have really looked at ourselves and you know would have been hurt you know because that those do change games you know, Coach always tells us you can play hard as you want, but, you know, just stay within the, you know, confines of the game. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, for the rest of the year, you know, we won't have that problem again. And um, just let our game speak for ourselves and um, just go out there and play. Um, if they want to talk, that's not how we play. And um, Coach always preaches that. So um, that's all to it. Coach, I wanted to ask a, a little bit about uh, this trip through now to another Sweet 16 appearance. What's the difference between this and maybe some of the previous uh, appearances, and what will your routine be? Do you know yet how you're going to uh, travel and that well, kind of thing? Well, this is uh, very similar to our first one. Uh, you know, I, I'm very proud of our, our team. Uh, this is our third Sweet 16 in five years. And uh, uh, the first one, uh, we had a couple games in San Jose, and then, then we went to Indianapolis to play. Uh, against uh, Louisville, who won the won the tournament that year, uh, in a hostile environment, uh, there were a lot of Louisville fans there that night. Uh, so now we go to Kansas City. Uh, we'll we'll get home tonight. Um, we'll uh, meet tomorrow and, and start working on Michigan. Uh, we'll leave Tuesday after practice. Uh, we are in finals this week, um, so we we've got some adjusting to do. We're going we're going to have a a crazy week, but uh, I'm sure glad we got it. I'm sure glad we got a crazy week, but uh, we'll uh, get home tonight. Uh, we'll get together tomorrow. We'll, we'll practice Tuesday and then fly to Kansas City and, and hopefully be ready to play on Thursday. One last question. 
Yeah, Coach, on that vein, uh, I don't know if the players probably didn't get to watch Michigan. Did you watch any of Michigan before this game? I imagine they watched you. Uh, uh, just a little bit when I was uh, taking a shower and getting ready, I had it on. Uh, but uh, I didn't really, didn't really watch it. Um, but, you know, I, I have I watched one of Michigan's games uh, in the Big Ten tournament, and wow, you know, and and beating Louisville with their athletes, and um, you know, we I've only faced Coach Beeline's team one time, and it was in the NCAA tournament uh, in Cleveland. He was at West Virginia, and I was at Creighton, and we got beat on a last second shot by two. So, uh, and then we we did play Michigan uh, in New York uh, three years ago. Uh, so those are the two times, and uh, so they're they're hard to guard. Uh, what he does offensively uh, is is really unique and special, and and they're a, a outstanding offensive team. Uh, you know, kind of a contrast. Danny, uh, that that defense we faced uh, is as good as any defense we faced all year, and um, their activity, their toughness. Uh, that's that's a well coached defensive team. And so we were very fortunate today with our turnovers uh, to be able to get that done because that's that's a very good defensive team and, and nine game winning streak and uh, really good players. So we feel very fortunate to be moving on and uh, we know how difficult Michigan will be on on Thursday and and hopefully we'll be ready and, and be able to give them a good game. Thank you, gentlemen. For the Rhode Island Rams, our student athlete guests are Jared Terrell, E.C. Matthews, Hassan Martin, Curran Iverson, and head coach Dan Hurley. Uh, coach, would you start us off your overall impressions of, of a very well played game tonight? Yeah, obviously, you know, two, uh, I think two really good teams, obviously, two pretty evenly matched teams, you know, um, credit to. Uh, a credit to those guys there, uh, you know, especially, you know, Tyler Dorsey, you know, had a, you know, had an amazing game. You know, lost him on some, some rotations. You know, obviously he hit the, you know, hit, hit the big three there uh, at the end. But, um, 
you know, couldn't be prouder, obviously, <laughs> of these guys, what they've, what they've done for, you know, the great state of, uh, of Rhode Island, our, you know, our amazing fans, uh, you know, the, this program, you know, the, these guys to my right, uh, you know, took over or, or came in when, uh, you know, we were uh, not in such great shape and then, uh, you know, took us to, uh, you know, possession away from, uh, you know, from getting to the Sweet 16. So, uh, you know, the men to my right and the guys in the locker room couldn't be prouder of uh, an amazing season for us. You know, conference champions, the run we've been on, the, the heart and, and uh, you know, that we showed today and the high level of play, uh, what I thought was amazing. And, you know, listen, we, we lost the game, you know, probably on the offensive glass there, you know, that sequence, not rebounding the free throw and then not re rebounding the missed three. You know, and then them, uh, and then they hit the three. Uh, you know, was uh, you know was obviously huge. Um, and then uh, you know, so the offense glass was a, you know was, was a big thing. And and Tyler Dorsey, <laughs> and um, you know, and then obviously um, you know the uh, you know just uh, you know just get outscored at, at the line the way we did minus twelve at the line. You know, in a tight game like that, uh, you know, in a in, in a one possession game is obviously a big factor. Um, so, uh, but you know, obviously it was it was exciting game. It was a game that was great for our program. Couldn't be more excited about our players, and, and credit to uh, uh, you know to those guys. Uh, they have a they have a good team. Questions, please. Dan, can you just talk about the bench play and uh, particularly what Stan Robinson was able to give you today? Yeah, you know, we, we have a deep team. Um, that's how we were able to kind of keep our heads above water the whole year. Uh, you know, when the health was a was was a mess for us, you know, Stan was uh, you know was big time. He's come such a long way, you know, as a player. You know, since he transferred in, you know, this was a guy that I think, you know, he he was changing from lefty to righty at one point in Indiana, you know, and now he's uh, you know, you know, run around hitting jump shot. He was just so aggressive and downhill. Uh, and then you know, obviously Hassan was. Uh, you know, he was just struggling physically out there. Uh, you know, his knee's been a problem. His knee was a problem coming out of the A-10 uh, tournament. It was, it was an issue this week that we tried not to talk about. Uh, but, you know, Cyril Langevin, you know, did not probably look much like a freshman. Uh, you know, he was a man out there. Um, you know, so we showed our depth, showed the strength of the program. Dan, Coach, uh Altman gave you guys a ton of uh, credit on defense. Probably said that, he said that you guys were one of the best defensive teams they faced all year. Can you talk about um, going into the game? Was your intention to to pressure their guards out front and, and how that really set up the game? Yeah, I mean, uh, the one day prep is tough. You know, I, I you know, we wish we you know could have gotten maybe in the in the first game <laughs> out here, you know, because we did we we, we did lose. Uh, I, th I thought we did a great job on Dylan. You know, Tyler, we did lose on some rotations. And then just, uh, you know, I, th I think the lack of prep time. Plus, also, too, I mean, you know, you know Dana Altman's a heck of a coach and, uh, you know, a heck of an offensive coach. And, um, you know, but I, I thought we, you know, we, we contested th their guards, forced them into, you know, an uncharacteristic amount of turnovers. Um, you know, we just... You know, we didn't do what we normally do in terms of guarding a three-point line tonight. And, and I think that probably had a little bit more to do with, you know, the greatness of kind of Tyler Dorsey today. For Jared and EC, uh, you guys have had a couple games lately where you had to hold on to a lead. Um, what was different today maybe that, that allowed Oregon to overtake you? I don't have a response to that. Um, I just think my guys just came out and just fought their hardest, man. We left it all out there all season. We had our up and downs, um, but today was was no different. We, we we put everything out there. We fought as hard as we could. Um, just ended up coming up short. Yeah, the difference, the, the difference in the game there was, you know, Tyler, you know, T Tyler Dorsey hit a contested three, and we missed a contested three. Coach, what does a season like this do for the program going forward now? Well, I think, it, you know, what, what it does is, uh, first of all, it's amazing for our, our players. You know, they get a chance to play on the national stage, showcase their talents, uh, you know, w w which, is, which is great, obviously, you know, for our, for our players, you know. Um, 
The experience has been amazing. I think it's been not only amazing for the coaches and players in terms of uh, making us even more determined to be back up here, you know, on podiums with police escorts and playing in huge games. So it, it just, you know, it, it drives that hunger more, you know. And I think, you know, at the university level, at a fan base, you know, I, I just think it, it ignites a fire and, and a desire, you know, for this to be, you know, who we are every year and, and making that, you know, that, that total commitment. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're, I'm lucky to have, you know, an amazing athletic director and, and president in, uh, in Thor Bjorn and Dave, Dave Dooley, you know, that have gotten behind this program. And I'd imagine that, you know, we're, we're, uh, th that we're going to get behind it even more uh, so that this becomes more of the normal for us. Uh, for uh, over here, for any of the players, how um, I, I imagine now that you have a chance to think about the game, how, how, how hard is it to think back on that possession when, uh, when Bell misses that second, or Ennis misses that second free throw, and they get those couple offensive rebounds, and then get that, that three to tie it up, you guys weren't able to grab that board there. Um, yeah, you, uh, the, the, yeah, you guys first. <clears throat> uh, we just failed to box out um, and just, go have, just have the will to go get it. Um, we do box out drills every day, so um, it's just something that uh, we should have took advantage of, and we should have just got the rebound. And, and they should have ended at that, but they were able to get a couple more rebounds and get and get two shots up. Um, nah, I really don't have anything else. That's just it. Yeah, I, you know, th that's th I think that's <laughs> that's what makes uh, th that's the fine line between winning and losing. You know, you secure that rebound. It's a lot easier to play offense down the stretch of games when you have the ball and you're tied, or if you have the ball and you're up three. You know, down three, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. You know, there's, there's, there's a level of panic sets in, especially when the other team is, is switching everything with the type of athletes and length they have. You know, uh, we're going to look back on that as coaches, <laughs> you know, probably on this plane ride home tonight. And um, it, it's going to be, uh, you know, it, it probably, that, that sequence probably cost us, the, you know, the Sweet 16. So it's devastating. Uh, Bill Codge with the Providence Journal. Dan, uh, hindsight being what it is, uh, maybe what could you have done to save a timeout for the last minute and, and maybe draw something up there? Can you take us into, you know, how you had to manage the clock with EC coming in and out with foul trouble and, and trying to play offense defense there? Yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, we, we talked about as a staff. I think, you know, when you're playing somebody the quality of, uh, you know, of Argon, uh, of Argon, excuse me, I've taken a lot of heat for the pronunciation this uh, last couple of days. Um, we need to use the timeouts just against a team of that level just to be in the position that we were in. You know, we, we, uh, would we love to have saved the timeout in case we had the ball, <laughs> you know, with 18 seconds left down three? You know, you're, you're trying to, you know, in the moment, um, uh, you know, stay, uh, you know, keep the lead or, you know, stop surges uh, from those guys. And, you know, we do something called winning time every day. You know, we did it in the ballroom today. We did it yesterday in practice. You know, we ran a you know we ran an action that we ran against Houston uh, to get a three uh, earlier in the year. You know, but they're you know they're switching. Uh, you know, really really screwed us up there, and uh, they did a great job of just you know taking away the three point line. Dan, to, to follow up to follow up on uh, you, what you were just saying there, it seemed like their length and their athleticism outside affected you guys a lot in the second half offensively. Couldn't really get into stuff. Was that was that kind of a big factor in the way you guys got bogged down there for a large portion of it? Yeah, I mean, we weren't as good. You know, we, obviously we shot 51% from the field, you know, um, against a pretty good defensive team. So, you know, pr pretty good overall. Uh, we weren't going to shoot 60% in the second half. Team of that caliber and, and their length was going to make adjustments. You know, they were switching back and forth between that 2-3 matchup zone and, you know, and, and uh, you know, and then, and then the man where they switched some things with the 1 through 4 and then would flatten over with the 5. So, I think they did a good job of... Uh, um, you know, they, they did a good job of, uh, you know, mixing up their defenses. And then we also, you know, I think what really hurt us on the perimeter was, you know, uh, and injury's not our excuse, but, you know, uh, if we have a healthy Hassan today, yeah, I, I think we could have put more pressure on the paint with, with, with posting him up. You know, physically, you know, he, uh, you know, he just didn't have it. And, um, you know, it was almost like, you know, took him out of the game in that last five minutes because I just... You know, my heart broke for him because he just couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't really go. Dan, as you look back at this at this run, what are you going to remember the most? Oh, uh, 
you know, I'm going I'm to remember, uh, you know, Karan Iverson and uh, the way he's grown, you know, since he transferred from Memphis, the way he's developed his character as a man and the way, you know, he's changed the way people, you know, people view him. Uh, you know, he's now a champion and a winner. And, uh, you know, he's going to have, a, you know, an amazing, uh, I think, career in basketball and beyond now because uh, he's developed great habits as a man. And, uh, you know, I'm going to remember, you know, Hassan Martin, uh, you know, who's been a rock at this program. I mean, you don't get uh, a chance to coach a better person uh, than him. You don't get a chance to play with a better person than him. Uh, I'm going to think about those guys, you know. I'm going to think about the different points of this year uh, where, where, where we had to fight back and show our resolve and resiliency and the strength of these men. It's, uh, it's a special group. These, these guys uh, did so much for our program and, uh, you know, um, couldn't be prouder. Thank you, gentlemen.